Good morning. Our moon is still out here and the beautiful colors in the sky are showing up for us. We're going to finish the last part of habit one, be proactive. This is called circle of concern, circle of influence. Another excellent way to become more self-aware regarding our own degree of proactivity is to look at where we focus our time and energy. We have a wide range of concerns, our health, our children, problems at work, the national debt, nuclear war. We could separate those things from things in which we have no particular mental or emotional involvement by creating a circle of concern. So we start here with the circle of concern. back there. Okay. The next one is the circle of influence. Um, as we look at those things within our circle of concern, it becomes apparent that there are some things over which we have no real control and others that we can do something about. We could identify those concerns in the latter group of circumscribing them with a smaller circle of influence by determining which of these two circles is the focus of most of our time and energy. We can discover much about the degree of our proactivity. Showing books in the dark. And then we're gonna move to that next one. go down just a little bit. See if that helps anything clear up for you. All right. The proactive focus needs to be and positive energy enlarges the circle of influence. So the small circle of influence will get bigger with our focus. Proactive people focus their efforts on the circle of influence. They work on the things they can do something about. The nature of their energy is positive, enlarging and magnifying, causing their circle of influence to increase. Reactive people, on the other hand, focus their efforts in the circle of concern. They focus on the weaknesses of other people, the problems in their environment, and circumstances over which they have no control. Their focus results in blaming and accusing attitudes, reactive language, and increased feelings of victimization. The negative energy generated by that focus, combined with neglect in areas they could do something about, causes their circle of influence to shrink. All right, reactive focus. Negative energy reduces the circle of influence. As long as we are working in our circle of concern, we empower the things within it to control us. We aren't taking the proactive initiative necessary to affect positive change. Earlier, I shared with you the story of my son who was having serious problems in school Sandra and I were deeply concerned about his apparent weaknesses and about the way other people were treating him. But those things were in our circle of concern. As long as we focused our efforts on those things, we accomplished nothing except to increase our own feelings of inadequacy and helplessness and to reinforce our son's dependence. It was only when we went to work in our circle of influence, we, when we focused on our own paradigms, that we began to create a positive energy that changed ourselves and eventually influenced our son as well. 
By working on ourselves, instead of worrying about conditions, we were able to influence the conditions. Because of position, wealth, role, or relationships, there are some circumstances in which a person's circle of influence is larger than his or her circle of concern. There's these two pictures. Are they still clear enough? This situation reflects a self-inflicted emotional myopia, another reactive, selfish lifestyle focused in the circle of concern. Though they may have to prioritize the use of their influence, proactive people have a circle of concern that is at least as big as their circle of influence, accepting the responsibility to use their influence effectively. And the next is direct, indirect, and no control. Oh, so beautiful this morning, my friends. Thank you for being with me. The problem we face fall, the problems we face fall in one of three areas. Direct control, problems involving our own behavior, indirect control, problems involving other people's behavior, or no control, problems we can do nothing about, such as our past or situational realities. The proactive approach puts the first step in the, in the solution of all three kinds of problems within our present circle of influence. Direct control problems are solved by working on our habits. They are obviously within our circle of influence. These are the private victories of habit one, two, and three. Indirect control problems are solved by changing our methods of influence. These are the public victories of habits four, five, and six. I have personally identified over 30 separate methods of human influence, as separate as empathy is from con confrontation, as separate as example is from persuasion. Most people have only three or four of these methods in their repertoire, starting usually with reasoning, and if that doesn't work, moving to fight or flight. How liberating it is to accept the idea that I can learn new methods of human influence instead of constantly trying to use old, ineffective methods to shape up someone else. No control problems involve taking the responsibility to change the line on the bottom on our face. Okay, let me try that again. That's somehow that sentence flowed out wrong. No control problems involve taking the responsibility to change the line on the bottom on our face to smile, to genuinely and peacefully accept these problems and learn to live with them, even though we don't like them. In this way, we do not empower these problems to control us. We share in the spirit embodied in the Alcoholics Anonymous prayer Lord, give me the courage to change the things which can and ought to be changed, the serenity to accept the things which cannot be changed, and the wisdom to know the difference. Whether a problem is direct, indirect, or no control, we have in our hands the first step to the solution, changing our habits, changing our methods of influence and changing the way we see our no control problems are all within our circle of influence.
And the next here on page 86 is expanding the circle of influence. It is inspiring to realize that in choosing our response to circumstances, we powerfully affect our circumstances. When we change one part of the chemical formula, we change the nature of the results. I worked with one organization for several years that was headed by a very dynamic person. He could read trends. He was creative, talented, capable, and brilliant, and everyone knew it. But he had a very dictatorial style of management. He tended to treat people like gophers, as if they didn't have any judgment. His manner of speaking to those who worked in the organization was, go for this, go for that, now do this, now do that, I'll make the decisions. The net effect was that he alienated almost the entire executive team surrounding him. They would rather gather in the corridors and complain to each other about him. Their discussion was all very sophisticated, very articulate, as if they were trying to help the situation. But they did it endlessly, absolving themselves of responsibility in the name of the president's weaknesses. You can imagine what's happened this time, someone would say. The other day he went into my department. I had everything all laid out, but he came in and gave totally different signals. Everything I'd done for months was shot, just like that. I don't know how I'm supposed to keep working for him. How long will it be until he retires? He's only 59, someone else would respond. Do you think you can survive for six more years? I don't know. He's the kind of person they probably won't retire anyway. But one of the executives was proactive. He was driven by values, not feelings. He took the initiative. He anticipated, he empathized, he read the situation. He was not blind to the president's weaknesses, but instead of criticizing them, he would compensate for them. Where the president was weak in his style, he would try to buffer his own people and make such weaknesses irrelevant. And he'd work with the president's strengths, his vision, talent, creativity, This man focused on his circle of influence. He was treated like a gopher also, but he would do more than what was expected. He anticipated the president's need. He read with empathy the president's underlying concern. So when he presented information, he also gave his analysis and his recommendations based on that analysis. As I sat one day with the president in an advisory capacity, he said, Stephen, I just can't believe what this man has done. He's not only given me the information I requested, but he's provided additional information. That's exactly what we needed. He even gave me his analysis of it in terms of my deepest concerns and a list of his recommendations. The recommendations are consistent with the analysis and the analysis is consistent with the data. He's remarkable. What a relief not to have to worry about this part of the business. At the next meeting, it was go for this and go for that to all the executives, but one to this man, it was, what's your opinion? His circle of influence had grown. This caused quite a stir in the organization. The reactive minds in the executive corridors began shooting their vindictive ammunition at this proactive man. It's the nature of reactive people to absolve themselves of responsibility. It is so much safer to say, I'm not responsible. If I say, I am responsible. 
I might have to say, I am irresponsible. It would be very hard for me to say that I have the power to choose my response and that the response I have chosen has resulted in my involvement in a negative, collusive environment, especially if for years I have absolved myself of responsibility for the results in the name of someone else's weaknesses. Okay, so these executives focused on finding more information, more ammunition, more evidence as to why they weren't responsible. But this man was proactive toward them too. Little by little, his circle of influence toward them grew also. It continued to expand to the extent that eventually no one made any significant moves in the organization without that man's involvement and approval, including the president. But the president did not feel threatened because this man's strength complemented his strength and compensated for his weaknesses. So he had the strength of two people, a complementary team. This man's success was not dependent on his circumstances. Many others were in the same situation. It was his chosen response to those circumstances, his focus on the circle of influence that made the difference. There are some people who interpret proactive to mean pushy, aggressive, or insensitive, but that isn't the case at all. Proactive people are not pushy. They're smart, they're value driven, they read reality, and they know what's needed. Look at Gandhi. While his accusers were in the legislative chamber criticizing him because he wouldn't join in their circle of concern rhetoric condemning the British Empire for their subjective subjugation of the Indian people. Gandhi was out in the rice paddies, quietly, slowly, imperceptibly expanding his circle of influence with the field laborers. A ground swell of support, of trust, of confidence followed him through the countryside. Though he held no office or political position, through compassion, courage, fasting, and moral persuasion, he eventually brought England to its knees, breaking political domination of 300 million people with the power of his greatly expanded circle of influence. more pages left and I'll try to fit them on this video. The haves and the bees. One way to determine which circle our concern is in is to distinguish between the haves and the bees. The concern of a circle of concern is filled with the haves. I'll be happy when I have my house paid off. If only I had a boss who wasn't such a dictator. If only I had a more patient husband. If I had more obedient kids. If I had a degree. If I could just have more time to myself. The circle of influence is filled with the bees. I can be more patient, be wise, be loving. It's the character focus. Anytime we think the problem is out there, that thought is the problem. We empower what's out there to control us. The change paradigm is outside in. What's out there has to change before we can change. The proactive approach is to change from the inside out, to be different and by being different, 
to affect positive change in what's out there. I can be more resourceful. I can be more diligent. I can be more creative. I can be more cooperative. One of my favorite stories is in the Old Testament, part of the fundamental fabric of the Judeo-Christian tradition. It's the story of Joseph, who was sold into slavery in Egypt by his brothers at the age of 17. Can you imagine how easy it would have been for him to languish in self-pity as a servant of Potiphar, to focus on the weaknesses of his brothers and his captors and on all he didn't have. But Joseph was proactive. He worked on B. And within a short period of time, he was running Potiphar's household. He was in charge of all that Potiphar had because the trust was so high. Then the day came when Joseph was caught in a difficult situation and refused to compromise his integrity. As a result, he was unjustly imprisoned for 13 years. But again, he was proactive. He worked on the inner circle, on being instead of having. And soon he was running the prison and eventually the entire nation of Egypt, second only to the Pharaoh. I know this idea is a dramatic paradigm shift for many people. It is so much easier to blame other people, conditioning or conditions for our own stagnant situation. But we are responsible, response able <coughs> to control our lives <coughs> and to powerfully influence our circumstances by working on B, on what we are. It is mighty cold this morning, my friends. I might out a little bit. If you can see that valley. <coughs> um, I don't know I'm going to make it here. Let's try it. <coughs> if I have a problem in my marriage, why do I really, what do I really gain by continually confessing my wife's sins? By saying I'm not responsible? <coughs> <coughs> All right. It's too cold. Thank you for being with me. I appreciate you.